I like where we're at here. It's a little bit cooler than Oroville. Plus there's no mosquitoes up here. Like mosquitoes love me. And where I work down in the valley, my God, they'll almost carry you away in the summertime. We're in town, but yet if you look down, I can see the Buttes and Butte College down here. Plus I have a little more, a little more invested in the house now. I mean, the, yeah, I've never let it go now. I first met Bill six months ago outside a gas station in Oroville. It was a few days after the campfire ripped through Paradise. He'd bought a pack of cigars, and when he went to light one, I noticed his hand was wrapped thick with gauze. And his face, well, it looked like someone had taken a blowtorch to it. We went to a park nearby, and he told me what happened to him. Picture the strongest blizzard that you've ever seen on film where the snow is just blown. Now change the snow to fire. Bill was at home in paradise the morning the campfire started. As the flames got closer, he noticed all his neighbors packing up to leave. And I got my fiance and my dog out of there. And then at 10 o'clock is when it was, this is it. You're either gonna do it or get the hell out of here. Here's the view in back of my house. There's my neighbor's house over there. There's another neighbor's house there. And I decided to do it. I'm gonna give it everything I got. I'm gonna save my house, whatever it takes. I set the chairs up along the fence, so I got a defensive position there. And the wind was so strong, I put the ladder right the edge here. So it was up against up against that part of the roof so it wouldn't slide. For 10 hours, Bill stood on his roof with a hose and kept the embers from catching his home on fire. By the time the flames had died down, his house was the only one left standing. The house that was right there is gone. The house across the street is still burning, but it's gone. To leave was accept the fact that your house is going to be gone and you're okay with that and that, that's not okay I mean, anybody I mean it might have been a little scary but uh anybody that would have stayed could have saved their home here it wasn't a falling tree on the house that caught it on fire it was a damn ember that just blew on the house in our first interview, you talked about how you would feel when you came back, and one of the things you brought up was feeling guilty. Um, well, do you still feel guilty? A little bit. I mean, I, I really I just couldn't be everywhere at the same time, but I, the house next door over here, I put out twice, and the house across the street, I put out twice. Sherry here was a piano teacher. Here's what's left of her piano. You know, and you think of all the, the hours spent, you know, like the joy that come from that music. And there's, there's her piano. Just walking around here, you know, I'm, I'm not messing with people's stuff, but just all the neighbors, it's, it's kind of, holy moly. I almost feel like a voyeur, <laughs> you know, the, I almost feel funny that I'm looking at their stuff, you know, like, but every one of these 11,000 homes that burned up, there's 11,000 stories out there just like that, you know, that that was stuff that meant something to them. Bill returned to his home in late December with his fiance and their dog. His street was unrecognizable. Bill had also changed. I didn't really notice it too much. But I was kind of a mess after the fire. No patience with anybody or anything. If I'm watering the lawn and I pull the hose and it get caught in something, I'd be screaming, you know, I mean, that's not me. He's not sure if what he's suffering from is post-traumatic stress, but whatever it is, he says it's getting better, that it's almost like a fading bad dream. I mean, I don't have dreams about it, but thinking about it, there was just so much happening so fast. The dogs are the main thing. I mean, I, I'm an animal lover. And that, that last look at the dog, I can't get that out of my head. The dogs were his neighbors.
Bill couldn't unlatch the metal cage they were in and had to watch them burn alive. I should have known that they were there. I should have went over there. But I mean, there was just so much happening so fast. I never even, it never even entered my mind until I heard him. Come on. I guess she don't want to go. I've had a lot of people say that I couldn't do this. You know, that seeing this every day, and you kind of get used to it. This is what I don't get used to, these trucks. They're just everywhere, constantly. And they're just getting started. There's so much stuff to remove. Like, this is going to be a long process. Bill survived. His house made it. And his hands and face have healed. But all of his neighbors are gone. And his street will never be the same. It's too soon to tell if paradise will be either. So I asked him the same question I asked six months ago. Was it all worth it? It's all an adventure. Life is an adventure. I lost two homes in a divorce. Since that time, I've lived like a gypsy. I've spent over four years living in a vehicle at different times. This is the, the happiest I've been in my entire life. And it's like, this chapter, I'm not ready for this chapter to be over. Nothing's gonna take that away from me. And it's kind of like over my dead body. And that's what it comes down to. I mean, 